held my breath just a little longer. Pandemic Diaries, Episode 1. I held my breath just a little longer. Just so I could see you disappear around the next street corner, I told myself. Just so I wouldn't run. Dug my fingernails into my palms. Shivered a little. The last time. Oh, it would never be the last time. I was in too deep from the beginning. You never said the words I'd like to hear. Never stuck to the script in my head, the one I made up day by day. All I dreamt up about you would, and one can be sure of that, slowly unfog, revealing it all to be a lie, out of sync, as it were. Never right. We stayed up that night in April, you in the furthest end of town and I in my own head, the soft green glow of the street lamp illuminating my otherwise pitch-black room. House plants draped leisurely across various surfaces, silent witnesses to the proceedings. They didn't know you yet. You'd never been to my place. I wiggled my toes in the kitten socks, protruding from under the covers. Told myself all I needed to believe not to claw my heart out. Tip-tap on the laptop. Tip-tap. Sought it all. The other day I'd been walking by myself in the forest. Social distancing, you see. I have been craving your touch since. Forever. The roots under my heels just about the only certain thing in my life. Yet they weren't always. I had brushed the dirt of my hiking boots and wandered. The structural integrity of my skeleton? The underlying truth? Everything was changing these days. About me, about us, the world. Nothing seemed like it would be the same again so soon. And I had taken the risk of it all, soldered the burden of forever being the bigger man, bearing all emotions as they came and taking them all on. Whenever I believed I'd tire of it all, exhausted as I was from that very last tidal wave that had knocked me to the ground, dragged me, flinching, across the grinding sand, the cold beach, the waves, the current sounding deafening in my ears, some force some sheer power had put me back on my feet. I never wished for it to be, rather for the sea to drag me all away and unite me with the depths of knowledge, where all was equal and nothing hurt. But that wasn't to be, and somehow I was glad of it. You only texted me when you were drunk. I only texted you when I was feeling the void in my chest expand, we were never on the same page, you and I. I hadn't been paying attention to the leaves changing in a little while then. What did it matter after all? I tried to keep my distance. And not just a government-mandated one. See, I had taught myself this growing up. Keeping my distance, just slightly out of reach, because I knew everyone had seen through my act from day one. I urged myself to perform but seemed to have forgotten how to lie on the way. My words were always meant to be subtle, yet in the cold light of dawn, their imminence was visible from way off. Might have as well rented a billboard sign to print them on. There are things I hated about being an open book. You were always easy to play. Fortunately for me, players never evolved. Their schemes fell apart in front of my very eyes, without them ever noticing. A bit too much enthusiastic empathy there, flattery, emotional vulnerability. It was like they tried to lure me in with my own weapons of choice, weapons never intended as such. They thought they had read me the entire time. Yet I wrote deception on a small slip of paper I slid under the door as I snuck out. They would never catch me. Dark clouds in the distance came to envelop me. A thunderstorm was imminent.